Alberta, according to what's called the Mansell Report, contributed to Ottawa between 1969 and 1984, get this, $95 billion. Now they give a billion back. That's great. That's approximately a little better than 1% of what they got. Yet, they got to do it again and they got to do it again. We're not going to solve the problem uh, by handouts from Ottawa. That doesn't, I don't think we are. Look at what happens when uh, the Americans have, you know, and the American farmer is getting twice for his grain what the Canadian farmer is, even with the billion dollars. You mean his government is subsidizing sure it south of the border they for are. twice the revenue that we have in Canada. That's right. And, it and he genuinely does feel that a Canada that can resolve these regional issues is better than a divided Canada. And I might add, he has said that if Alberta were to ever separate, that's the end of Canada. The rest of Canada will fall apart very, very quickly. Kerry Diot for Rebel News. Everyone knows and remembers the late Ted Byfield as a conservative activist and great opinion columnist. Now there is a book about the man and the legend. There's a gentleman by the name of Jonathan Van Meren who runs his own show, The Bridgehead. And uh, he's a, he, he felt that we don't have enough conservative heroes. In fact, I, I don't think we, we have hardly any these days. Uh, and um, the, the media has done a great job in, in popularizing a lot of... Uh, Left wing folks. So, but Dad or Ted uh, was very much a larger than life figure, and this came through. And the the stories that circulate around my dad are so amazing at times that some people think that they're made up. And Dad is the first one to say that. Uh, uh, how did he put it? Verification has ruined many a good story. But at the same time, the, tr the facts when, with some of the things that my dad had accomplished in his life need to be told. Hopefully, uh, it will serve as an inspiration. For someone who's never heard of Alberta Report, how would you describe it? Uh, Time magazine from literally 1920 in terms of its viewpoints. It was Christianity. It was Christian values, but it wasn't in your face Christian values. It was just assumed. It was it was sort of the foundation of every article, pretty much. Uh, but it was not. Uh, anyway, it it took off. It was very popular. And what happened in the early 80s is it became known that. They were practically the only media, if not the only media in the province that was going to stand up to the liberals when uh, Pierre Elliott Trudeau and Mark Lalonde introduced the National Energy Program, which was a blatant grab of Alberta's energy in terms of tax revenue. Did, did your dad uh, see this book before he, he passed away? No. no, I'm afraid not. Dad, dad had, he was able to see uh, a draft of the first three or four chapters uh, and had provided a lot of input with Jonathan. He thought Jonathan did a really good job. And by the way, um, people who've reviewed the book and have endorsed the book, like Preston Manning, uh, Preston won't, won't endorse a book unless he's read it. He's a very principled man. And uh, he thought it was exceptionally well done. And uh, so, so did others. Uh, Fildebrand, your competitor for the Western Standard, said he could not put the book down. He just, he says he's never read a book faster. What did he think about politics toward the end of his life? Obviously, uh, he saw the first Trudeau up close and personal. Uh, yeah. Um, I think actually dad had a fair amount of respect for his adversary. He, he always thought of uh, Pierre as a, uh, a, a very intelligent man, um, but quite clearly the enemy. And, and if you read dad's writings, even early on, even though dad uh, lived and died a federalist, dad um, saw the, what is often coined now the Laurentian elites 
as a really serious problem that will wreck this country if they are not somehow put in check. And so dad came up with the Triple E Senate well, along with Preston Manning. And, uh, but that's been fairly soundly rejected since. The, uh, it's probably not a secret to most people in Alberta that it's arguable that had your dad not been around, there might not be a Conservative Party of Canada. Uh, yeah, uh, I think so. It, because uh, I, if you look at the history of movements, I think that the Reform Party very clearly said, and it, and the most the most famous expression that's associated with the Reform Party is the West wants in. And Dad was the keynote speaker at the first assembly in Vancouver for the Reform Party. The West wants in, uh, and uh, so I think had. Preston and dad not provided that leadership and vision, there were plenty of people, even back then in the 90s, uh, who wanted out and had had enough. Uh, but dad uh, said, we need to give it one more try. And, uh, and they did. They tried really hard. Um, and uh, so, so Preston obviously created the Reform Party and, and then uh, Stephen Harper took over and uh, and f then merged with Peter McKay. I have my opinions on that not necessarily being the best thing for Western Canada, but I certainly has kept uh, kept everything stuck together in terms of the conf the federation. Con con what do you think? What What do you think your dad would like to be remembered most for? I think he wants to be remembered most for his books. Uh, and and uh, he 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 every day until his last day prayed every morning and prayed every night and I think that he wants to be remembered as a good and loyal servant of God. Now that means serving his fellow man, and that means serving his fellow Albertan and Western Canadian. And he genuinely does feel that a Canada that can resolve these regional issues is better than a divided Canada. And I might add, he has said that if Alberta were to ever separate, that's the end of Canada. The rest of Canada will fall apart very, very quickly. Ted Byfield was a conservative legend. If you'd like to know more about what made this guy tick, check out Prairie Lion, the book. For more stories like this, check out rebelnews.com.